Okay, so I was laying up there and I couldn't sleep and the fact that these women, you know, try to make me out as such a bad guy, I'm just want I'm just gonna keep on showing their selfishness. Um, I, I got a good story for each one of them that just it just came to me. I'm not trying to think on these things. They just are coming to me because it's been suppressed. These women are counting on me dying or whatever. So that way I cannot speak. They don't want this out there. This ruins their whole narrative, their whole story of their whole lives that they've lied to everybody, manipulated everything. It's terrible. And it's touched so many lives. I mean, it, the how deep and how strong this goes is unbelievable. Um, so I'm going to give a story for each one of them that is just on my head because I'm laying up there and I'm like, oh my God, am I really thinking about this right now? And I, I couldn't go to sleep. It just kept on staying in my head. So I'm going to tell these two stories. I'll start with my first wife. When we were still together, it was after Sammy was born, I think. She had severe postpartum depression. I could be wrong on these timelines. Again, guys, it's sort of hard. I'm just riffing on this. Um, but she was working at UPS as, I guess it would be a package handler, but she was in there where she, I don't think she was loading trucks. I think she was just putting things on the conveyor belt. I don't know, but in that general area, it's all in the general area. But what will happen is things, packages will get ripped open all the time, right? So she bring like all kinds of weird shit home cool cool shit neat neat stuff like sometimes we get brand new movies for free dvds cds um well one time she stumbled across a nice sized <laughs> jewelry shipment it was going from one jewelry location to another um jeweler from jeweler to jeweler and she showed that shit to me. She had kept it secret for like a week. I think she was trying to sell it on her own and realized that she didn't have the knowledge how. So then she showed me. And at first I was like, eh, this can't be real because it had the price tags on it, right? And the price tags were no joke, guys. I'm talking like $12,000 bracelets, $14,000 this, $8,000 earrings, you know, $2,000, $4,000. So I had taken, I had, see, I think this was right when internet came out. Um, and somehow I had, because I didn't believe it. I thought, I thought it was one of those things where like, you know, they, they sell that fake jewelry, you know, and they put those high prices on it. I thought it was like that, but I had taken and gotten evaluated. I can't remember how I'd done it, but somehow I got it evaluated a couple, I went through a couple different avenues and I think three different avenues to try to evaluate like a couple pieces of it. And there was a big satchel of it. I mean, a big satchel. And I think it was, it was, it was a lot of money worth of jewelry. And, um, once I found out what it was worth, I was I, I didn't want anything to do with it because I was like, it's not even worth the risk. I had million multi I had multi millionaire family members, so once you're you see, this is how I looked at money and and all this shit from a young age because I had family that was so wealthy. I realized like, who cares if you have a few grand? That doesn't mean anything. You're gonna have a good time for a little bit, but it's not like having a few million, <laughs> you know. So, like, that's why stealing after the military, I was just done with it. Like, I stole a bunch of stuff from the P, uh, from the, um, the armament, uh, not the armament, the, um, supply house or whatever. So I had all kinds of military equipment and stuff that I'd gotten. But after that, after I got out of the military, I was done with stealing because it was just like, I, I, I was into building a business. I, I realized how money worked and, you know, I wasn't a master thief. I wasn't trying to become a bank robber. You know what I mean? So anyways, she ran on this across this jewelry. And when I figured out how much that it was actually worth this amount of money, it, I was, I didn't want anything to do with it. It was probably like 150 grand, probably in jewelry, you know, right around there total. Um, and I just didn't want anything to do with it. And I think that was right about the time we split up. I can't remember. Maybe it was a year later, but she held on to the jewelry. Um, 
I didn't have anything to do with it. And we ended up, I left her like a year later, maybe. It, it, again, timelines are rough. So, yeah. So, you know, just to give you an idea of, you know, who knows what she ended up doing with that. I don't, I don't know. But that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? My second wife, this was like six months, maybe, before she left me. Maybe eight months. Nine months. Maybe eight or nine months. She came to... <laughs> We were driving, I think, one day, and she goes, I got something to tell you. And I was like, okay. And I think I was driving and when she told me this story. And she said, I don't know if I should tell you. And she didn't want to tell me. So she finally ended up telling me and she was like, listen to that she's like I was under my dad's in it she was in a cabinet I think in the kitchen at her dad's house and she said she happened upon it and it was like a, a big box filled with just rolled up cash and I was like okay so probably his life savings maybe and she's like what do you think and I was like, and it, because I didn't get it at first, what she was saying to me. She wanted to go in with me. She wanted to steal money from her dad with me. So now this all makes sense, more sense to me, because see, like eight, nine months later, or whatever it was, is when she left me. We used all of our money right before she left. We had gotten like tax money, and I had got, we had gotten a little bit extra money from something else. So we had like a total of 10 grand, 12 grand, something like that. We had put a big down payment down on a car for her and then, you know, bought some stuff for her and, you know, did some stuff for the family. Um, and then that money was gone. But then like it was like a month or two later after we did that with the tax money and, and that extra money that we had that she left me. And but she she moved into a three level townhome. I was like and we were like barely struggling I was like what and she, that, that was like right at the end like she was I don't even think she had graduated from I don't even think she had graduated from her medical billing and that's what I'm saying like these women where does this money come from where do they do all these things? And it's really funny that she came to me. And, and so, yeah, so in the car, she was, you know, she's like, so what do you think? And like, I, the first thing I'm thought, I'm like, okay, it's life savings. You found his life savings, you know? And then when she said, what do you think? I'm like, and I remember looking at her and like, the, I was like, oh, that's disgusting. I said, just because there's no fucking way I'd take money from that man as much as he's helped us out and done everything. Are you fucking kidding me? And then it never got mentioned again. So, yes, I guarantee you, I mean, that's, that would make sense because I don't think her mom had any kind of money to give her that because she had to put money down on that townhouse. She had, and she was partying her ass off. And like I said, if she was working medical billing, if she had just graduated. So she was only making like $20 an hour. Twenty bucks an hour. How who how who sold her a three level townhome, making twenty bucks an hour? She must put a massive down payment down. And I guarantee she stole it from her dad. So yeah, just more stories, guys. Just more stories, and I'm gonna keep them coming. I'm not gonna stop. I refuse to stop. I won't stop till I die. So you bitches, <laughs> it's all coming out, bitches. <laughs>